Today I'm upgrading my lead acid AGM batteries in my Roadtrek 190 to lithium ion and this will outline the steps I took. So step one is to make sure you've already pushed your um, battery disconnect, which on this one is just is called the battery on or off. You can ensure that there's no power going to the batteries by pushing the test button. If I turn it on, we'll hear a click, we'll carbon monoxide, Bunch of cycles, All right? So the batteries are only three quarters, uh, which again, is kind of what I'm getting out of them is about 75% or maybe 70%, uh, which is why I'm going to swap them out for a lithium ion. See how we do. So again, turn those off, All right? No power to your batteries. Should be safe to remove them now. This Road Trek 190 popular has two battery compartments has one right in front of the uh, rear wheel and one right behind it. I'll show you how to get at the uh, both of them. This one's quite simple, you just unlock it, which we'll do here in a second. All right, now we've got a bit of corrosion on them. Another benefit of uh, lithium ion is you're not gonna get that. So I'm going to go get a bungee cord to keep this door open because there is no little latch for it. So let's do that. Now, I guess I can show you this one at the same time. It took me honestly a little while to figure it out because you don't see any kind of latches on it. So what you're going to want to do is there's a wing nut or a nut, something to be holding this guy on here. So unscrew him. Right, that's not the tricky part somewhere safe you'll notice it's not going to come off right it's still on there really good and it's just cheap plastic or fiberglass so if you look underneath you'll see what's going on there's a little handle or there should be if yours isn't rusted off and broken you pull that down like so and then it flips forward Once you pull down the little handle from underneath the car, it's just a matter of kind of wiggling it and lifting it off. There's a little ledge here. So it comes up, might be kind of stuck from corrosion. But if you look at the mechanism here, what it's doing is, this is, needs to be pulled down. You get out of the little holders and then there's a ledge at the top. That will release your uh, compartment for your second battery. So I think I'm going to start with the more difficult one, which is the one in the back. Um, just because I want to get it out of the way. Now what stops these from just falling out is there's a little latch here, up and down. Get that. Now. This one is definitely being stuck. Okay, we won't pull it too far until we can see what's going on with the cables. Okay, I haven't pulled them all the way out yet. There we go. Now this track, at least on mine, will fall out. If I kept on pulling it, it's not gonna fully extend. It'll rather just fall to the ground. Problem with that being is the cables will still be connected. So before you get it all the way out and having it stressing your cables, uh, let's take them off. So after you get the, your, your nuts off, in my case it was 14 millimeters, uh, for these guys. Take off your negative first. If you, all right, loosen those off. You might want to, also before you get too far, see if you have to run to an auto parts store to get a new battery tie down. This one looks severely rusted, so I'm going to put on some PB Blaster and see if I can get it off without breaking it, but chances are it's rusted on there. It's just going to break this uh, 
when I try to unscrew it. This stuff's got to be my favorite tool in my toolbox. PB Blaster. Um, basically spray it on whatever you want to take off and let it soak as long as you have time for. So once you've found something to bungee cord your lid with, similar procedure on this side. Flip this guy up, pull it out. And for me, this one is much easier to work on than the one in the back. Here, we'll get it nice and out so you can see. All right, lots of room, nice tray doesn't fall off. I like that guy. And uh, if you do happen to, to be doing this or you're going to go to the auto parts store anyways, make sure you get some dialectic lithium grease or dialectic grease, I guess. And then because when you go to put your terminals back on, you're going to want to coat it, which will help uh, prevent rust. And it looks like I should spray this guy too with some PV blaster and let it sit for a bit. So, make sure you calculate that into your time to finish this job. That didn't take long. It's exactly what I expected to happen. So rusted. As soon as you try to put any pressure on, on it to uh, unscrew it, it's gonna break. So, yeah, plan ahead. Get a couple, maybe four. There's two on each side. Typically I only undo one, because once you get one out of the way, you can flip this out of the way. But, uh, the front's rusted, the back's rusted, so you might want to replace them both. Let's see if we have any better luck with this side. <laughs> nope. Well, the only good news is we can get it out of there pretty easy. Out, so that's... Okay, in terms of dimensions, you see obviously it's uh, shorter lengthwise, uh, which shouldn't be a problem. It's really the uh, smaller is not the issue. Typically it's too large, so it's the same height, no issue there. Same width, good, and a little bit shorter in length. So I'll make sure I get some, replace those tie downs because those will be what's keeping this battery from moving. Probably also stick a piece of wood uh, to jam it in here so you don't get some back and forth movement once you put it <clears throat> in the tray. Okay, we'll get this on the scale. Do have these really nice handy uh, flip up handles which are a lot better than the lead acid batteries.
right? 24 pounds. So pretty light for a, a battery this size, right? Okay, remember this one's 24 pounds. Nice and light, actually. Put this on there without breaking my scale. 48.8, yeah, exactly. Pretty much double. Okay, cleaned up my battery box, cleaned off the connectors with the brass wire brush, painted my battery box, got my battery ready, got some dielectric grease, which is what you're gonna wanna put on your terminals so that uh, it'll help those stop corroding. And uh, we'll get her in there now. Well, it turns out I need to get this side off as well. Nothing like heat. It comes right off. Just be careful not to touch it until it cools down. So something to watch for when you're putting your rear battery back in is this is all metal, right? So this is why this rubber flap is here. So if yours is pull, pulled off or no longer there, you need to cover up your positive battery terminal. I'm gonna do a better job of covering up this guy on the front. It's not an issue because it is plastic or fiberglass, probably plastic all the way around. So even though maybe getting close, it's not gonna matter. Uh, you'll see I haven't found my front tie down bar yet, but it is all back in there. So again, I'll make sure you cover up your positive terminals on the rear battery on your road trek. So here's what I ended up with. I put some more insulation, the shrink wrap insulation on the positive terminals. And just to be extra careful, I still have the cap from a new battery, which we're just gonna kinda put on there and once we push this into the battery compartment. Yeah, I come here. Right, it's gonna hold it. It's not gonna fall off. There's really not much place for it to go. So we'll do that. And negative. It's not going to matter, it's only your positive. You want to keep away from the metal or shorting. And uh, we're almost done here. Okay, so other than uh, the front battery tie down where the nut broke off because it was rusted, these are good to go. That one's in, that one's in. I'm going to put the cover back on. Before I do that, we're going to go and make sure it actually works. It goes without saying. Make sure you triple checked, quadruple checked that the battery terminals are connected to the right cables. Before you do this, that's a carbon monoxide and my batteries are showing nice and full. These were 13.37 when I installed them. I turned on the inverter converter, been running it for a good half an hour to put the magic fan on. To get them down to see if they'll uh, charge back up with the stock 2004 Rotrek 190 inverter converter because it should be putting out close to 14 volts uh, which will be enough over time to charge up these lithium-ion batteries so let me go plug it in and we'll see what happens so plug it into the house essentially and which will hopefully start charging these 
Okay, that didn't take long. It only took about 30 seconds to get back to these and you can tell they're back up to 13.37. And it's plugged into, I guess you can call it shore power, into the house. All right, 13.38. Probably get up to 13.4 before the battery decides to stop taking any additional charge. So that answers that. Definitely not a problem to charge 12.8 volt lithium ion batteries with the stock 2004 Rotrek 190 inverter converter. Which is the Triplight RV612 ULH on this model.